Hello YouTube. Today I'll be showing you a God Wars Dungeon 2 combat training guide. And so this is basically the heart of Gylenor. It requires 85 Slayer, because that's the highest level Slayer creature it requires, which is Abyssal Demons. So you can get there by using the Desert Amulet 2 or higher, then teleport to Narda, and then run southwest and climb down. So here's my equipment setup. You should use either Range or Mage, because of their corruption abilities. If you were to use melee here, it can be very very dangerous. So I have a Noxious Staff. Then the perks I suggest are Precise 5 and Aftershock 3. I don't have any spare gizmos for these perks, so I didn't actually use them in this video. Then I have Full Subjugation. And the perks I would use are Impatient 3, Crackling 3, Biting 2 plus Mobile, and Scavenging 2 or 3. The Mobile perk really helps here, because that way you can move around the encampments. Now those perks are pretty optional anyways. Then I have Silverhawk Boots, and that is for Agility XP. Then I have Surgeon's Ring, but otherwise you can use Luck of the Dwarves if you want the Hazelmere Signet chance. Then I have Amulet of Souls, and you want to use this because it helps you sustain damage using Soul Split. Now otherwise you can use Blood Amulet. I wouldn't really suggest you use Zealots, because you're not always 100% accurate against all these creatures. Then I have God Book. And you can use Vampirism or Penance Aura. Then finally I have Elf City Quiver. And that is for prayer bonus. Alright so here's my inventory setup. You don't want to use Aggression Potions. Since you'll get piled really badly and you'll die almost instantly. So first I have Holy Overloads. Then Weapon Poison Plus Plus. Now it's really great in combination with Corruption Blast. Then I have Replenishment and Prayer Potions. You may want to bring some food, just in case you cannot survive. Then I have Air Runes for Air Surge. You can bring a Spring Cleaner if you want, alongside Alk Runes, cause then you can make some profit this way. There are also a couple of helpfuls you can bring, such as Ring of Vigor or Enhanced Excalibur. Then in my Tool Belt, I have a Bone Crusher and a Charming Imp. Alright so here are the prayers. You can flick on and off the prayers when you're not actually in combat. So what I would suggest is either Torment or the tier 99 prayer, then Soul Split. Alright so here's my action bar. I have Corruption Blast on the first slot. And that is the key to this method. It only costs 14 mil to unlock, and you can do this by buying the Mazcap Raids Codex from the GE. Then I have Dragon Breath and Chain, and those are extra AoE basics. Then you want to fill the rest with whatever basics you want. For thresholds, I'm using Detonate, and so basically what you do is press and hold it for 3 seconds, then release it for some massive AoE damage. The only ultimate I would suggest is Tsunami. I wouldn't use it too often though, but it actually has some decent AoE. Alright so here's the strategy. And that is the most important section here. So before I actually get into the strategy, I'm just going to explain how the spawns work. So there are four encampments in this area. The Sliski, the Zeros, the Saren, and the Zamrak. And so basically there will be an army of mobs that will spawn near the boss portal. And so what it will do is it will try to fight another faction. So they'll usually stop, meet up, and cluster at this giant beam. I'm not sure what it is called, but on the mini map you can see this orange looking circle. And usually when they stop, they try to wait for another faction to show up and then you'll see a gigantic war. And after they die, there's a good chance that they will not add reinforcements from the same faction. So first, you want to find a cluster of these mobs and use Corruption Blast. Ideally you want to use it on a melee monster because it is weak to magic. Now if this splashes, it will not spread the damage, so you're basically just wasting a Corruption Blast. Now after you use Corruption Blast, you want to click away from the target, and make sure you turn Auto Retaliate off. At this point, you can either do one of two things. Wait for the Corruption Blast to cool down, or else you can continue attacking. It's usually safer but slower to wait for Corruption Blast cooldowns, but it's actually faster to just continue and AoE the rest of the mobs, although it's a lot more dangerous. 
So after most of the creatures die, just go to another encampment and find a cluster. I'm not sure exactly how the spawn patterns work, so I can't really help you out on this. You can either try hopping worlds or just keep running. And this is why mobile perk really helps a lot here. Now finding a cluster can take a while sometimes. You just want to ignore the clusters if they're very small. Now I probably don't do the best job of recognizing spawn patterns. Sometimes there will be wars happening in the open field, not necessarily near the giant beams. Alright so here are the drops. The drops alone are quite terrible, but you can expect a lot of battle staves and addy items. Ingression fragments are mainly the drop you want to look for, cause what this does is you basically summon reinforcements for God Wars Dungeon 2 reputation. I didn't actually record the profit per hour in this video. So overall in one hour, I got 700k mage combat XP. So really, it's decent for combat XP, and it's also great for scavenging perk. It's really the only way to get God Wars Dungeon reputation, aside from, you know, killing bosses or just getting daily bounties. At this average rate, you can expect approximately 450 reputation per hour, assuming you summon the large reinforcements. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask.